Hello everybody. How are you today? I hope that you are good. I see a lot of you are already on. So thank you to everyone who has jumped on so far. I greatly appreciate it. My name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path here in Forest City, North Carolina. I have a physical bead store in Forest City, North Carolina. Um, I have been beading for almost 20 years. I've had the bead store for 18 years and I've been right here on YouTube for the last 10 years. Today, we are gonna learn a brand new project called the Everybody's Hubbling Bracelet. So if you will remember last week, I showed you how to do Hubble Stitch from Melanie's books called Let's Hubble. That was the first project in the book. Everybody remembers Happy Harry, although I was corrected and said it's Henry, but we're going to stick with Happy Harry, okay? So, I hope that those of you who practiced Hubble this week um, will be good to go. I had three people here who I tested this project with the other day, and um, some of them had a little bit of a hard time getting started, but once they got it started, they went to town, and most had emailed me pictures of their finished pieces um, within just the day. So I'll go ahead and show you um, a little bit of a bigger picture so you'll be able to see. This is one that Vera tested for me. You'll see here it's really pretty. It's using the perma finished um, galvanized uh, rose gold and the perma finished galvanized brick red seed beads on this one. Um, this one Donna tested for me. It is a galvanized starlight and also um, the Turkish Blue. Both of these are Toho seed beads. And the other one is this one. Catherine tested this one for me. Um, this is the Perma Finished Matte Galvanized Peach Coral or pink coral and the matte turquoise. And again, both of them are Toho's. So just like last week's Hubble video, you wanna make sure that both size 11 seed beads that you use are Toho seed beads. If you try to use a Mayuki and a Toho or a Toho and a Czech seed bead or a Mayuki and a Czech seed bead or whatever, it's not gonna work out good for you. So make sure that you use the same color seed bead, or not the same color, but the same brand seed bead, okay? That's gonna be your biggest thing. Now, you can find the pattern for this. This is an original pattern of mine, okay? And you can find it at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Okay, uh, so Dorothy keeps saying it is not sinking. I don't know what you mean, sweetie. I I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Um, but the Everybody's Hubbling Bracelet, this pattern can be found on my website, again, at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Now, Melanie has a wonderful pattern in her, um, in her book that is Tubular Hubble Stitch. And it's great, it's just I personally wanted something a little different. So that's what how I came up with the everybody's hubbling. So here's what you're gonna need. You are gonna need four to five grams of a size 11 seed bead in a color A. All right, so here we go. So the color A is gonna be um, that metallic color that you see there on this bracelet. My color B110, which you're gonna need two grams of, is this matte pink. You need a button. Your button does not matter what type button you use as long as it's got the little shank on the back of it. You're gonna need 24 to 26 inches of a 1.5 millimeter leather. Now, let me explain to you something about the leather. My favorite leather to use is a um, Greek leather, okay? It is a natural leather. It's really, really nice to work with. Um, it gives you just a tiny bit of, of leeway when you work with it. But here's the thing that you need to understand. If you have a smaller size wrist, 
you're gonna want that 24 inches of your leather. If you have a larger wrist, you want more like the 26 inches. That two inches is gonna make a huge difference in what you would need. So for me, when I made this bracelet, this one's a seven and a quarter, and when I made this bracelet using the 24 inches, I barely had enough to be able to make my little knot here. Okay, so make sure if you need a bigger bracelet, you use that 26 inches. Okay, um, also you can use a size 10 or a size 12 beading needle. It's completely up to you. And you're also going to need four to five yards of a four pound fire line. Okay, the four pound fire line is going to work best for this project. But if you have 1G, um, six pound fire line, anything like that, you can use it. Don't go over a six pound fire line though. The fire line is going to work best for this project. So I am getting a question can you use rat tail cord? I will go over that in just a moment. <clears throat> so that is what you are going to want. Now, I know I'm going to have somebody, like somebody just said, can I use rat tail? You can, but it's not going to work as good, okay? Also, I know somebody's going to say, I don't have 1.5 millimeter. Can I use a 2 millimeter or a 2.5 millimeter? The answer is yes. You can use a thicker diameter leather. The only thing is, if you use a thicker diameter leather, you are going to need a larger tube of beads, so, as I get started on the project, I will explain to you what you will need to change if you use a thicker diameter than a 1.5, okay? It's going to make a much larger tube, and um, you're going to really need more thread or more um, leather because you're going to have to make it almost like a bangle style. So, just remember that. I know someone's going to ask about my earrings. The earrings I have on today are actually some earrings that were going to be a bracelet. If you follow along with my bead therapy, these were going to be a bracelet. Um, I'm going to have Sammy. He's helping me moderate today. So he will put the um, link to the videos on here. So that way you can see those. And finally, if you will kind of hang out to the end of the video, I have some fun stuff to announce as well. A couple of new patterns that we have online for you. And one last thing, and then we'll jump right into the video. Um, I ordered, a customer um, asked me to order her Melanie's book on Amazon. She wanted the print copy. So I ordered the book, but then like two days later, I got a refund for the book from, um, from the Amazon people. And what they told me basically is that they're out of stock and I don't, I guess we bought a lot of them. So right now, only the Kindle version of her book is available on Amazon as of right this second. And somebody said, oh, well, I don't have a Kindle. How am I supposed to get it? You don't have to have a Kindle to purchase an ebook on Amazon. If you want to purchase the ebook, Kindle has an app that you can put on any device, Android, Apple, whatever you want. Um, they have a free app that you can put on there and you can put your, um, your instant, not your instant downloads, but your e pieces into that. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got my needle threaded with two yards of thread. You are going to have to use a good bit of thread today for the project, but I'm going to show you how to end thread and how to add thread. And um, I think you'll find once you get it started, again, um, remember starting, it's just like peyote stitch. Starting is always the hardest part. Once you get it started, you can go to town on your piece. I can finish one of these in two hours. Okay, so that is the awesome thing. So um, I'm going to flip the camera around so I can kind of show you um, what you're going to need and all of that good stuff and we're going to get started so if you get camera you know motion sickness please look away for one moment okay okay so here we go hey Preston I seen you lit Chinese lanterns over the weekend I loved your video for that okay so here we go friends So this is the completed bracelet, and I have worn the heck out of this thing. I love it. Absolutely love it. So I've used it a good bit. Um, Christine is asking, uh, can you use Sono thread? You can, but it's not going to work as good as the four-pound fire line. 
okay? So this is what your bracelet is going to look like. And you'll see here, I've got my button end and my button loop end. I wanted to show you another color sample here as well. This is one I've actually already got stitched up so I can show you how to add the, the end to it. Um, this one is using, and I've got little a note card here, um, my mauve sample, which was this one, used the Perma Finished Galvanized Mauve Toho and the Opaque Pastel Frosted Shrimp. Um, the tan here um, was the Goldline Rainbow Aqua Toho and a Perma Finished Matte Galvanized Golden Fleece. And then I have one other sample to show you when I get ready to add the thread and you'll see it, what I've used here. So now let's get started. Okay, let me grab my leather. Okay, so here's my leather. You'll want 24 to 26 inches, as I said. So I pretty much know what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my leather. Uh, let's see, Bernadette says she doesn't think her leather is long enough. Um, as long as you have 24 to 26 inches, you will be fine. Okay, so I have my leather, and I'm going to take my button. Again, it doesn't matter about your button as long as it has the shank on the back that you can thread your bead onto or your button onto, and it will work. So I'm going to put it on here. And I'm going to let it drop down to the middle of the leather. Now, you'll notice on this sample, I started with this loop. And I don't like that. This was the original one that I started, and I don't like it. So that's why we're starting with the button this time. Hello to everybody jumping in. So we're going to make a knot, all right? And to do the knot, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my button and I'm going to wrap the leather around my fingers to make a circle. Now I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to take this two pieces of leather here and I'm going to bring them through the center of that loop and I'm going to pull this. Now when you pull it, you want that button or that knot to go all the way down to the button and pull the thread tight. Then I take each piece and I pull those tight. You want to make your knot this way so that both your pieces of leather are exactly side by side, okay? If you try to knot it this way, like we do our shoes, your beads are gonna be like this or your pieces of leather are gonna be like this and you're gonna have a much harder time. So if you do it like this, you'll have everything knotted and good to go. So I've got my needle threaded and we're gonna start hubbling. So I'm gonna pick up three of my color A 11s. I'm going to bring them down and when I bring them down, make sure to leave a six to eight inch tail thread. Okay, so this is the very end of my thread. So I'm gonna leave a six to eight inch tail thread. Now you can either tie them into a knot or you can go back through all of them again and then tie them together. It's completely up to you. Okay. Now you'll see why we are leaving that tail thread in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to my little tail thread here, and I'm going to go through one bead right next to the knot. It doesn't matter if I go this way or this way, but I'm going to go through one bead. Hello to my mama. I see my mama is on. Hello to everybody who is jumping on. Okay, so I'm going through one bead right next to that knot, and I'm going to pull it through. 
Now I'm gonna pick up one bead. This is Harry's head here. And I'm gonna come down through the very next bead. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this thread. So when I do this, you can see here, we have Harry now, Harry. He, here is Harry's head. Harry is very happy because he's like, yay. And then we have his body. Now here's the only thing, and I'll tell you this from the people who tested this for me. They did not like saying that this was Harry's body. They said they liked saying this was Harry's feet, okay? So it's completely up to you, but his head and his arms need to be up like this. Um, if he flips and is like this, that's okay for our first row. But when you go to add the second row, you do not want it to look like this. See, Harry is not happy. Harry's like, I'm so sad. We want Harry to be like this, okay? So that is why these two little arm beads here, here and here, have to be up. Okay, so I've got my first Harry. Now, I'm going to thread on three beads. And the great thing about this, if you had a little bit of a harder time with regular Hubble, you only have to do four Hubble stitches. Everything else from here is Hubble, but everything is exactly up and down, so you don't have to worry about it. So now I'm going to go back through that first bead again, just like I normally would there. And see how far my, they are apart? You don't want that. So I'm going to grab a hold of the bead, put my finger on it, and I'm going to pull that thread straight out. This also works really nicely because if you are a tight stitcher like my friend Beth, um, you don't have to worry about it being tight or loose. So that is the good thing about this one. Okay, so again, we've got his arms and his little body or his feet. Now we have to add Harry's head. So I've got Harry's head here, and I'm going to go down through the very next bead. Okay, thank you to everybody who is saying they are loving my nails. I will explain those at the end of the video. Absolutely. Okay, so now we have two Harry Hubbles. So I'm going to do two more. So we have to pick up three beads. We let these drop down. I'm going to go through the first bead again. Pull the thread through. And we have Harry's arms and his body or his feet. Now we are gonna pick up Harry's head and come down through the very next bead so that we have three Hubbles. So one Hubble, two Hubble, three Hubbles. So we gotta put one more Hubble up here and right now, like I said, it doesn't matter if they flip flop or whatever they do. So I'm gonna pick up three. I'm gonna let these drop down. And I'm gonna go through the first bead again. So that now I have the fourth part of his body. And again, if it pulls out like this, it's okay. Just grab a hold of the bead and pull the thread straight up. Now, if you're using Fireline, you will find that these are gonna stay in place for you pretty easily. If you're using something like a 1G, a KO thread, or anything like that, you're going to notice that these slip around. So that's why I recommend. So if you look here, you will see we have happy, happy, not happy, and happy. Okay? So that is what you want to pay attention to. Happy, happy, not happy, and happy. So I'm going to just flip him up so that all my Harrys are happy, happy people. Now this is where your cording is gonna come into play, okay? We want to lay the cording down like this, and I'm actually going to lay it to where my tail thread is to the right and my working thread is to the left, all right? Making sure all my little Harrys are happy here. I'm going to lay it down onto the leather and I'm going to fold the first Hubble and the last Hubble together. 
So if you fold these together, if you are using a thicker leather, rat tail, whatever, these don't fold together well like these do here. You're gonna need to add more hairy hubbles. So it's up to you. You can add as many as you need to make it go around. It's gonna work exactly the same way, no matter what. So here is where my working thread's coming out. And this is where my knot is and where my tail thread is. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go up through the arm of the first Hubble, okay? So this is my last Hubble. Now I'm going through the arm of the first Hubble and I'm gonna pull this through, okay? Now I'm gonna go through these beads again here of the first Hubble to reinforce and pull everything together. So I'm gonna go through his head, his arm, his feet, his arm, and his head, because I wanna come out here. So I'm gonna go all the way around. So I'm gonna go through his head. His arm. Thank you, Donna, for answering that question. I appreciate that. Okay. okay, and if it pulls apart, that's okay. Just pull your thread back tight. Like I said, this was the hardest part for my testers was getting it started. Now I'm gonna go through his feet, his arm, and his head. All right, so right now, my working thread is coming out of the head of my first Hubble. I'm going to take the needle. This is why I told you to leave this six to eight inch tail, because now you wanna put a needle on this side. Erica says, does it matter if it's Toho or my Yuki? No, Erica, it does not matter which brand it is, but you have to stay. Both seed beads need the same brand. Okay, so both colors that you're using need to be the same brand. Your round leather is going to work the best. All right, so I have a tail thread or my needle here on my tail thread that's coming out of the first Hubble. I want to go through the four feet beads or the four body beads here of these first Hubbles to pull them together so that they'll stay tight against the leather. So right now, if I hold it up and down like this, it's coming out of the arm. So I'm just gonna take my needle and go through the body right under it. And I'm gonna continue just going through these four beads here at the bottom. And I'm gonna pull them tight. Now you are going to see just a little bit of thread between the beads here at the bottom. If that bothers you, you can put a little size 15 seed bead between these beads, okay? But I have not found it necessary to do that. Paula, I am using a four pound fire line. Four or six pound fire line is going to work best for this project. Okay, and you can see here, I'm going through these beads several times. I am using up a good bit of my thread and that's what you want. You want a really nice tight connection here with those four beads. So when I come around, if I'm satisfied with how many times I've went around through those beads, then I will add a knot here and get rid of this thread. So I will go under these two, the thread here between two beads. And I'll pull it through. And then I'm gonna do this again. Okay, for those of you asking about thread, 
If you will, please catch the replay. I talk about the different threads at the beginning of the video. And I um, also have a question. Somebody's asking, could this be turned into a bangle? And it is no. Okay, and... Okay, so I've gotten rid of the short tail thread, so you will not have to worry about that short tail thread at all, okay? So we're back up here to our working thread. And you, and look, you guys, look right there. I didn't make sure that Harry was up and down, and right now, I can't fix it. So that first stitch right there is not gonna look great. That first little, um, or that second Harry Hubble, his arms are down. I didn't pay attention to it before I went through the bead. So that's why I say it's really important to pay attention to it. All the other ones look fine. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rip it out to fix that one part. Um, it's okay. Um, we will fix, we will fix him on the next go round. Now, if he was flat, I would definitely say no, let's rip it out and start over, but this one is good to go. Okay, so we are on our second row of Hubble. So we are gonna pick up two beads. My thread is coming out to the right, and I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come back through the bead again to make a circle. And there puts Harry's arms. And we are gonna go through the first bead of those two that we just added. So I'm gonna put my finger on it and I'm gonna pull that thread through. Okay. Now we pick up Harry's head. You thread on his head bead and you go down through the very next bead, which is gonna be the one here to the left. And again, I'm just gonna kinda put my finger on it and pull the thread just enough to pop the head in place. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it just a little bit here. I'm gonna pick up two beads. I'm gonna come to the next head, which is this one right here, but I have to come back through that head bead going from left to right. Now, if I'm left-handed, I'm gonna be working the other direction and that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna pull this through. This is done like plain Hubble, just like we did last week. I pulled it through and I'm gonna go through the bead that I just added, that first bead there. I'm gonna put my finger on it and I'm gonna pull this. Pick up one bead and go down through the next bead. Okay, Dory is saying, where am I gonna put in the second color? You will see in just a moment, my dear. Okay, and I'm just gonna turn it. So I found it best and easiest if I kind of hold the leather around and I use my pointer and my thumb to hold my beadwork as I'm working here. So again, I'm gonna put on two beads. I'm gonna come to the next head, which is here, and I'm gonna come back through that bead, going back towards the beadwork I've already finished. I'm going to pull this through and then I'll go through the first bead that I just added and pull it through. Pick up one bead and come down through the very next bead. All right, so here we go. We have one Hubble left that we need to add for the row. This was sad, Harry. He is not happy. You don't do what, do as I, do as I say, not as I do type thing. You don't want Harry to be sad. Okay, so then we pick up two beads. We take our needle and we come back through that bead going right to left. Or I'm sorry, left to right. And then I'm going to pull this through. Then I'm gonna come up through that first bead again, pull it through, pick up my one bead, and then go down through my very next bead, just like I normally would. All right, now here's the thing. You'll see here, I have my first Hubble and my last Hubble, and they are not connected whatsoever. So this is where we have to connect the Hubbles. So just like we connected in the beginning, I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come through the arm of that first Hubble. 
okay? Now, again, you guys, this is something brand new. Everybody just kind of hang out with me till you understand and you see the pattern, okay? So I've come out of his arm, and now I have to go through his head, his arm, and his feet or his body here. So I've got to come around. So I'm coming through. Okay, I'm seeing some questions that I will answer at the end of the video. Okay, so I just went around to come out in between the rows, okay? Because if you'll see, you'll see here we have space. We have a little hole here. So this is where our color B is going to come into place. I'm going to pick up one color B, and I'm going to come through the very next foot bead of Harry, okay? Or his body bead, and that bead is going to pop into that hole, Pick up one bead, come through the next feet or body bead of the next Harry. And when you do that, that bead will pop into place. Now pick up one bead, go through the next feet or body of Harry. Okay, and then we've got one more to put in here. Pick up one bead and go through the next bead. So each row where you put on a B bead, that's where your color is going to be. That's where you're going to have that one pop of color. So in this one, it was that matte pink. In this sample, it was that kind of matte gold. So that's where your pops of color are going to be throughout the piece. Now, here's what you have to do. I wanted to make sure every row that you did, you did the Hubble in one direction and the other in the other direction. But I always wanted you to start and end the rows exactly the same way so it wouldn't get confusing. So, to start the next row, all right, I'm coming out of the feet here of Harry. I'm going to go through the first color B that I put on. Then I'm going to go up through the arm and the head of the very next Harry. And when you do that, that is your step up and you are now in the exact same position to add your Hubbles in the direction that we were going. So to, we're remember, we're just doing regular Hubble stitch right now. We're just doing it in a circle. So two beads, and I'm gonna come back through the same bead that my thread is coming out of to make the circle. All right, and again, this is the good thing. Once you go after that first row, and you can see right here, you can clearly tell the difference in the way the beads are laying. Harry is sad here, and he's happy here. Remember, we want all our Harrys to be up and happy, all right? So now, two beads after the first row, every Harry will be happy, and you won't have to worry about it. Pick up, we're not gonna, we got our two beads, and I'm gonna go through that first bead I just added. I'm gonna pick up one bead, and I'm gonna go down through the very next bead. Alrighty, thread on two, go to the next head, and remember, we're going to come back towards the beadwork that we just added. Then we want to go through the first bead of that set of two here. Pick up one bead and come down through the very next bead. Now, if you are a tight stitcher, just like with regular Hubble, you're gonna have to loosen up your stitching, okay? If you do this one tight, it's not gonna curve, and I will talk more about that in just a few minutes. Okay, so I have my two beads here that I just added, and I'm gonna come back through 
that first bead again of that set of two, and I'm gonna pull it through. I'm gonna pick up one bead, and I'm gonna come down through the very next bead. And remember, I do have a step-by-step -step pattern for this on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Okay, so two beads. I'm here to my last little hubble. If you'll notice, I've got one, two, three hubbles. I need to add the fourth one. So I pick those two beads up and I come back through that bead. And then I come up through the first bead of those two that I just added. Pick up one bead and come down through the very next bead. So Dory says you could also you could also do this in the flat version too. Okay, so again, first hubble, last hubble, they need to hold hands. They need to connect. Okay, so we have to go up through the arm of our first hubble. Last hubble, first hubble. I'm going to pull this through. Now, to get into position to add my B beads here, I got to go through his head, his arm, and either his feet or his body, however you want to look at it. Okay, so one two and three. So I go through one and I'm just going to keep my finger on it just to keep everything nice where it needs to be. Don't go through all three at one time. You go through all three at one time, you're going to mess the look of it up and you're going to get it loose and it's not going to look pretty. Okay. So now we pick up a B and we go through the very next bead here in that row. Okay. Turn it, pick up a B, go through the very next bead of the row, pick up a B, go through, pick up a B, and go through the last bead of the row. And I'm gonna pull this through. All right, so this is what we've got so far. Now, remember, we wanna be coming out of a head. If I come up through the arm and the head here, I'm gonna be coming out to the left, and that's okay, except for then you're gonna be working in the opposite direction. Remember, I created this so that you're gonna be working in the same direction for you know every other row. So to get to where I need to be, I'm gonna go through the first B that I added, and then I'm gonna go up through the arm and the head of Harry. And again, I do see some questions that I will get to right now. I'm focused on just showing you guys the stitch and helping you to understand the stitch. So my thread is coming out to the right. So we're back to regular Hubble. So I pick up two beads and I'm gonna come back around to make that circle. Then I'm gonna go through the first bead that I added here. I'm gonna pick up one bead and I'm gonna go down through the very next bead. Okay, so now I'm to my next tubble, so that's two beads. And I'm gonna take the needle and I've gotta go through the head bead here and I'm coming back towards the beadwork I've already got on there. And then I go up through that first bead that I added. I thread on one bead 
and I go down through the very next bead pick up two beads I'm gonna come to the next head here and remember we're going back towards the beadwork that's already there and I kind of pull this up here so you can see it. You've got your two beads here. So I'm gonna go through that first bead of the two. Pull it through. Pick up one bead and go down through the very next bead. All right, and you can see here, I have the last little Hubble so I pick up two beads and I come to the head here of the last Hubble. Just, we're gonna do this Hubble just like we normally do. Go back through the head bead and then up through the arm bead. And then I pick up one bead and I go down through the very next bead. All right, again, we have our first Hubble and our last Hubble. Our Hubbles need to hold hands, okay? They need to be happy and hold hands. We can't socially distance on this. We have to hold hands. So we take our needle and we're gonna go up through the very first arm of our first Hubble. Then we need to come down to here. So we're going through one, two, three beads to get there. So we're coming around and down. So one, two, and three. All right, so we're to the, the holes here. So this is where we're gonna put in our B bead. So I pick up a B and I go through the very next bead in the row. Pick up a B. And I'm not pulling these super tight. I'm only pulling them enough to pop them into place. So when I go through the last bead for that row, remember I have to go through the next B and then up through the arm and the head. Now I'm doing this slow for your, you know, so you guys can see the stitch and can understand it. Um, normally I would be working much, much faster and I would have a good bit already completed on this. So you can see what your piece is starting to look like. It's a really, really quick stitch to do once you learn it, okay? So the great thing is you basically follow this until you get to the length that you need. Now, a word to the wise, okay? Very, very big word to the wise. This is gonna fit when you wear it more like a bangle, okay? So, and your tube is a pretty good size. So if I laid this out with a ruler, the ruler may tell me, oh, well, this is seven inches of beadwork, but it's not because of the size of the tube, you always have to keep measuring it around your arm to get the correct sizing. So this is something that you're gonna have to test on your arm continuously to make sure it's the size that you need, okay? So I'm gonna need to leave about an inch to go back and add the clasp or the button loop that I'm gonna need, all right? So you're going to want something like this. Now, one thing that um, I just noticed I forgot to show you on the leather, I actually took a little piece of tape here and put it near the end so that as you stitch, it will keep your pieces of leather together and your thread won't get caught as you work. Okay, so that's the really, really good thing about that. Before I move on, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the colors that I used here. My color B bead is this Luster Tuscan Orange, and it's a Toho. And then this Perma Finish Matte Galvanized Violet Toho, 
and it's here, okay? So, now what I wanna do, I think you understand the stitch now. So now what I wanna do is I wanna show you, if you run out of thread, what to do. You don't want, what you don't want to do is you don't want to tie your two ends of thread together and continue to work. I found that it pulls out too easy and it does not work as well. So this is a piece that I had started and I just started a little test strip and I ran out of thread. So I've tied the thread off, completely tied it off and got rid of it. So it's really easy to start a new thread. And again, I'm using my four pound fire line just because it works the best for the project. Again, you can use whatever kind of thread you want, but four pound or six pound thread is going to work the best. The bracelet that you see finished here took me about five yards of thread to make. Patricia, my bracelet was given to me this past week. It was gifted to me by my friend Vera. Um, she just got out from the pandemic and she gifted that to me for my birthday. And I'm all about my prints, my animal prints. So she, I am loving it. All right, so I've got my two yards of thread and I've got my needle threaded. Now this is where you're actually gonna want two needles. Okay, this will just make your life a little easier than having to unthread and thread and all of that kind of stuff. So, new thread. And remember, I always, for mine, am coming out of Harry's head to the right. If you're left-handed, you know, you can come out of the left, completely up to you, but I'm going to the right, okay? And I'm gonna go through the arm bead and the head bead, just if like, oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. What am I saying? I'm getting confused here. Um, I'm going to come anywhere on my piece here. Since I'm adding my B beads, I'm going to come anywhere on the piece. Let's say I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to go under the thread between these two beads here. Okay. I'm going to pull this through. Now, if I would have been coming out... Um, another way, I was going to show you a different way, but this is kind of the only way to do this one. So I've pulled my needle through to leave just a little tail, and I'm going to tie that tail and working thread together here. Now, this is the great thing about using this thinner four pound fire line. If you put a knot in it, you're not really going to be able to see it, and that's the good thing. You definitely want to make sure you use a color that's going to blend well with the beads that you're using. So since I've tied my little knot right here, I'm going to go through this row of beads again. Until I'm back to where that knot is. And then I'm going to do my little step up just like if I was going to start adding another Harry Hubble. So I'm going through an arm and a head here. And his head is exactly where I need to be now to start adding these B beads in again. So let me grab a few of those off my tray over here. <clears throat> So I pick up one bead, go through the next, pick up a bead, go through the next. Okay, so I just work my row, just picking up my bead beads here. And just like normal, when I get back around, I'm simply going to go through the B bead and then up through his arm and his head to start the next round. Okay, so working thread is coming out where it needs to be now. And then I've got this little tail thread down here. Okay, so this is where I can take the needle, thread it on, so I don't even have to worry about the other. And then I can take and I can stitch through a few beads to kind of get rid of this short 
tail thread. And then that way you can get the bead or you can get this thread out of the way and not even have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, Dorothy, that makes my day. Thank you. I love it. Okay, and you can see here, I'm just, I'm just going through the row. Sammy, Preston's talking to you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pick up my scissors and I'm going to trim that little thread off. So that now I would just continue to be able to work and do my Hubble stitch. Now, here's the thing you definitely want to be okay with. When you stitch this, if you use a really, really tight tension, your piece is not going to bend well. So you can see here, this is when I started with another thread and I've stitched it so tight, it will barely move, all right? So you wanna use a looser tension. Now, I also noticed on this one, I started here and I was doing really good. And then when I got to about right here, and I can kind of hold it here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, this right through here was really, really tight. I just started going to town and got my tension too tight and realized that I couldn't bend the tube. Like you can see here, I can hardly bend it in certain directions, especially right here. So you want to make sure that you can bend it and your tube is flexible. If you see that you've done it too tightly, loosen up. Loosen up on it a little bit, and you can even do this to kind of loosen, but make sure to use a looser tension for your piece. All right, so now let me get this out of the way so that I can show you how to finish. So I have my whole piece stitched. I am happy with the length of it here, and I am ready to go to town on the next one. Now, let, before I do that, I wanna make sure Yep, okay, so my thread is coming out of the head here, just like I was at the bottom, but instead of doing his feet, now I'm going through his head. So I'm gonna go through all four beads here of Harry's head. And I'm going to go through these beads a good many times. Now, if you want to pierce your leather and go through your leather, you can do that. It's completely up to you. Um, I find it's just as well just to kind of do it this way, but if you want to kind of go through your leather, you can do that as well. You're, you know, you're at home at your own bead tray and you can do what you want. So it's completely up to you. This is just how I found that it works the best. Preston, the bad part about you bringing up the shrimp is that you always talk about it on Mondays during the video when the seafood place is closed. All right, so after I've gone through a few times, I'm going to make a knot. So I'm gonna go under the thread between two beads. I'm gonna leave that little loop. I'm gonna stick my needle through and pull. I'm gonna do this a couple of times. Okay, and then once I've gone through, I'm going to stitch down through the beads and just get rid of this thread. Okay, you never want to cut your thread at a knot. So you can see here, I'm just gonna go through some beads to get rid of that thread. Okay, once you're comfortable 
then you can take and cut your thread. Okay, so I seen a couple of people were asking me about these little tiny scissors. I actually bought these scissors in Prague last year. Um, so that is the fun thing about these. I honestly have no clue like where you could find them. They're just really great little, little travel scissors, absolutely. Okay, now that I have my beadwork completely done, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut off my little tape here at the top. Oh, hey, Joy. Oh, I'm so sad you're having to work today. Don't worry, you're fixing to come on vacation to see me. Woohoo! Okay. So, I've got this now, and now we're gonna make another knot. So, I'm going to take the, the leather and wrap it around. And then I'm going to take these two pieces here and go through that loop. And then I'm going to pull the leather. Okay. Down to my beadwork. All right. And when you do that, you want to make sure that you pull this all the way out and that you, when you make the knot, make the knot with it kind of done like this because if you pull that knot too far down it's going to cause your piece to lay straight instead of being able to curve so before you pull your threads tight here make sure they're in a circle like this so that way you will be okay finishing out your piece and you can just kind of pull each of these threads nice and tight but now you can see here, I had 26 inches, and this leaves me plenty enough now to be able to make my knot. Had I only used a 24 inches, I'd only have about this much thread left, and I would have a really, really hard time trying to get that there. So here we go, our last and final step. I'm gonna start another knot. And I'm gonna loosely loosely pull it down okay i'm going to test the button to make sure that my button will comfortably go through the loop and then i'm going to tighten that loop up okay and you really really want to pull these threads tight here on this last loop and I'm just making sure, Carolyn, we, um, we sell the buttons on our website. The great thing about the buttons is you can get these in plastic. So if somebody is allergic to metals, um, you know, or has an allergy to metals, um, you can get them like a plastic button or a glass button. So that's the cool thing. Now, if you want, you, if you have a bead with a big enough hole, you can put little beads here and make a little knot on each end, or you can make a little knot, you know, whatever you want to do. I personally just like it plain. I'm going to cut, and then I would put a little dab of glue right here, and I am done and can wear the bracelet. So, that will fit perfectly. And the great thing about these, they work up quick and they make great stackable bracelets. So you could wear them stacked together. Now you can see here, this whole tube is really nice and flexible. And this one, once I get to here, it's really, really tight. So make sure to pay attention to that tension issue. So give me one second. I'm gonna turn my camera around here. There we go. Okay, so let's see if I can answer some questions that you guys had through the video. Okay, so first of all, you can get the pattern on my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Again, the Greek leather is my favorite, but you can use any kind of leather, any type cording, whatever you want to use, okay? But if it doesn't work, Please don't complain to me because I've told you what's going to work the best, okay? So that's the first thing, okay? You know what colors now that I use, so we're good there. 
Um, let me see. I think there was another question somebody asked. I'm scrolling back through here just to double check. Um, is that shank button available in your bead store? Yes, it absolutely is. You can find it at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And remember, if you want, if you have bigger leather, you just are going to have to add some more hubbles. That's your biggest thing. Um, does the bracelet naturally twist or did it turn while you were beating it? Um, it doesn't naturally twist. It pretty much will stay in a straight line like this. Okay, um, it will do just a little, but it's not going to spiral. Okay, so that's the thing. If you're thinking it's going to spiral, it's not going to spiral. It pretty much is going to stay in a straight line as you um, you beat it and you work on it. Um, so let me just go through one more quick time because I'm pretty sure there was another question somebody asked. Wayne Wiley said, could you also piece... Um, pierce the thread through the leather and then tie it. Yes, you can. Um, can one make a chain and bracelet? Okay, I'm not 100% sure what you're asking. Could you rephrase that? And maybe I will understand it a little bit better. Um, okay, and so somebody asked about the, um, can you make it into a bangle? This is not a good one for a bangle, okay? So that is what you need to know there. Um, your hairies will get messed up. And there we go. Someone asked about the thread you're using. Again, I was using four pound fire line. If you have more questions about the thread, please see the beginning of the video. So that way you can see. The leather I'm using is round leather. Your flat leather will not work as good. Your piece will come out more boxy instead of being a round tube. Yes, I sell the leather, absolutely. Um, if you go to offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com um, and you click on the July July 6th E-Class Info, um, I'll have it up through the rest of the day. It actually has a link to the leather, my favorite leather that I like to use. We sell it by the yard. Um, so we have that. Okay, Dory, thank you for asking that. I actually have that information. Dory says, can you bead this around a dowel? Okay, so Dory, thank you again for asking. You can bead this around the dowel. However, if you bead it on a dowel, you are going to have a really hard time getting your beadwork onto the leather when you take it off the dowel. Because what's going to happen when you take it off the dowel, the B beads are going to sink in. So you're going to have your A's here and your B beads are going to kind of sink into the tube. So when you go to put your leather through it, you're gonna have a much harder time getting your leather through it. You'll be much better off if you do it on the leather, but if you find that doing it on the leather is too frustrating or too hard for you, yes, you can do it on the dowel, but I don't suggest it. And again, it needs to be a 3 16th size dowel. If you want the, you know, if you have a bigger dowel, you're just gonna have to remember your beadwork needs to go around it. Um, Dory, no, you don't have to put your leather through it. You can do it just like um, Melanie did in hers. But the only thing is, Dory, it's going to be squishy. It's going to be very, very squishy. It's not going to be nice and rounded like you want it. When you put it on, it's going to go whack. It's going to be a flat piece instead of being nice and round like this. Okay, so that's going to be your thing, Dory. If you don't put something on the inside of it, like this leather, to hold it into a tubular shape. So that's going to be your thing there. Now, I wanted to show you um, a couple more things uh, really quick or let you know about a couple of more things. Um, first of all, I've had a couple of people ask. They don't like this format of the video. I've had two people out of 217,000 ask me that or tell me that. <clears throat> At some point after the pandemic, I will go back to an old format of doing a filmed video. 
But honestly, right now, I feel like we need connection with each other. And for those of you who are able to watch live, I know that you enjoy being able to ask questions. One of the things that I love about being able to do this live and have you ask questions is you guys have actually made me a better beater and you've made me a better pattern writer because you ask questions that I would never think to put in the pattern or to think about as I'm beating. So first of all, thank you for watching the video live and thank you for commenting and asking questions because it really, really does help me to become a better writer and pattern writer. The, um, the people who don't like it um, or who don't like the live format, please remember, if you think I'm talking too much in the beginning, there's that great fast forward button that you can hit and go forward so you don't have to listen to me talk as much. Um, and all you have to do is click the middle of your screen and that button pops up for you, okay? So that's the first thing. The next thing is if you'll remember, if you have been following along with me through our bead therapy videos, you will remember that I did a whole series on bead embroidery and I showed in one of the videos how to do um, a or how to bead embroider a pear shaped stone like the one I have here. Okay, so you've seen me do it in the video, but you didn't get to see like the finished thing. All right, so I wanted to show you I actually did an e class with my locals and I added the pattern to the website. So you actually have a pattern now for the piece here. Okay, really quick, um, let me look here and who just said that. Um, Boundless Agape, um, you need to look up the Greek leather that we have that's sold by the yard. Um, we do have it in five meter bundles that I'm sold out of, but hopefully we will have the restocks of those in this next week. But we do have 140 yards of it right now in stock of the sold per yard, okay? And I have a direct link on the website. Okay, here was a Laguna color that everybody just died for in the class. They love that Laguna color. I have a blue color here to show you. So this one was two different kinds of blue. And then this was one of my favorites. This one is the same thing. It's just with cup chain, cup chain around the edges instead of the ball chain. So it's really, really fun. And it's a beautiful earring. When you wear it, it's absolutely beautiful. So I do have the pattern for this on my website now at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And they are called the old ball and chain earrings just because you're using ball chains. So that's why I named them that. But this was a pattern that you guys asked me to write during the pandemic and we've got it done. So we are good to go. Um, and I think, let me just double check. I think that is all that I had to talk to you about today. Um, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I'm hoping that I will be with you again on this coming Monday, which is gonna be what, the 13th, but I have a bead retreat coming up next week, and I'm going to be really busy getting together and get everything together for it, but um, if I'm able to make sure to check out this week's email for me, if you get my emails, um, check out my social media platforms, and check out the website, so as soon as I know if I'm going to be able to be have a new project for you guys, I will let you guys know through the website and our social media pages. So, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please, please, please try this project. Like I said, the hardest part was getting started. Once they got started, my testers were good to go. So, guys, please check me out at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And I hope you have a fabulous day, a great week. And remember to stay safe and spread some love this week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.